Good morning. Good morning, Bridge Nation. Welcome to the public eye. I'm Ronald Thwaites. This is Bridge 99 FM. Today is April 27th. Many are peeved with the recent report that several students at Kingston College were prevented from entering the school compound on Tuesday by the school administrators because they were not properly groomed. Students were told that their hairstyles were improper or not fit for the classroom. So that's one issue today. But remember, the public eye offers you the opportunity to share with us any matter of national concern, of personal interest. We're pleased to to take your calls on 876-676-4996. And the WhatsApp and text line is 876-551-5782. Remember... In an hour's time, we join Ari Jam and the inimitable Beauregard as we spread the word of what's taking place in Jamaica for all the world to be to be aware. This is the station that links people of Jamaica and origin uh, to the rock, and we welcome your input. We don't believe that you are somehow external to the process of nation building. We want everybody to participate. You have questions, you have difficulties in negotiating things from far to us in Jamaica. Check us now. We'll be glad to help you. All right, so that's what the public eye does. We've been doing that for oops, years now, close on to 50 years. Next year will be 50 years, I think. And the whole idea is to use the word, use the lyrics of music, use whatever means of communication we have that reaches most to ensure that no one, no one is, uh, uh, is alienated from, nobody is, is, is remote from the country of their origin. The news this morning is that less... Our Jamaican families are receiving remittances. That's very surprising. Yeah, the amount of remittances is increasing, but the number of families who say that they are dependent or that they are uh, receiving the remittances has gone down by 10%. I find that very, very surprising. Yes, well, the uh, source of it is the uh, consumer uh, confidence a uh, poll that's done every once in a while by the super reputable Don Anderson of Market Research Limited. So we watch and see. In the meanwhile, we express gratitude and ask for consistency of all of those who help relatives back home with the whether it is a barrel or is it money to buy lunch or it is the rent money or the utilities money. Yes, that's what it is. It makes a big, big difference. I have to tell you that the Gleaner today, this morning, has a, a, a headline. It says, The Food Crisis Grips Jamaican Homes Report Fines. Yeah, this is troublesome. It should have been the main headline, in my view. Quote, Jordana Murphy writes, I shop for food far less. I can't buy fruits for my kids, and that hurts. My kids are hungry most of the time. Can't afford gas and electricity bills. Sometimes we sleep in darkness. First in my life, I have to be living like this. That's a response of a 33, 43-year-old Jamaican who participated in the World Food Program survey, which was administered in January and February, representing 6,000 households across 22 countries and territories. Four in every 10 Jamaicans have reduced their food consumption and 98% of the Jamaicans who participated in the survey says that there has been an increase in food prices. As a result, 9 in every 10 Jamaicans surveyed have changed their shopping behavior. Well, I guess we know that. And the question is what we're going to do about it. I support the Minister of Agriculture, belated though, he, though it is, in saying, look here, we have to produce more for ourselves. He points to some uh, small areas of increase in local domestic food production, but that's another issue, you know, that you, can, you don't plant today and reap tomorrow. And so let's make sure that we are getting it straight and doing intentionally and swiftly what is needed to be done. I doubt that at this stage. Later on this morning, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck joins us. Been anxious to speak with him for a long while. He's talking about how distressing family breakdown is in Jamaica and what a contributor it is to the climate of crime. Well, what 
can we discuss and what can we think is going to be the remedy for that? I want to ask Leroy Chuck if he's in favor of mandatory sentences. As you know, I'm not. I'm surprised that he seems to be or change his position to that. So let's ask him to. And then there's the issue, you know, of people participating as justices of the peace in a voluntary endeavor and for us to be very, very clear as to what their responsibilities and their obligations are. We pick up the public pulse on the public eye. That's what we do. I guess it's time for a little bit of music. Is that what it says? Yes? You give me hope. Here's Elaine. If you're not ready, then that's fine. We'll wait until you you cue us. In the second hour of public eye today, we join Professor Basil Wilson, the retired provost of John Jay College in New York, Jamaican-American, American-Jamaican, have it any way you wish. I'm very concerned about what it means for free speech, what it means for the future of liberal uh, politics and the behavior patterns that Twitter, that well-used social media platform is going to be owned by one man. Really? Yes, who has, doesn't have to report to anybody except himself and who can skew the news and the views in any way possible. Really? That's good? What is the antidote to that? Who is going to start up any competitive opportunity? And are the American, uh, is the American public, particularly the Caribbean element of it, are we happy with that? You're going to continue to use it and make that the main me- way of expressing views and news in, 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 in that situation? I'm very concerned. Tell me if you share that. It's a, it's a question I'm going to put to the Arijam audience and Beauregard later on in the program. We'll soon come back. Thanks for being with us on The Public Eye. This is The Bridge 99 FM in Kingston, beaming to Jamaicans all over the world. Boy, you know, some of you in the United States really going to have to interpret American politics for me, you know. Because here you have this Mr. McCarthy, who is a re- Republican, and cuss Mr. Trump and express how uh, completely outraged he is at Trump's behavior at the January 6th insurrection last time and how it was provoked by him. Yes, acknowledging that he and Mr. McConnell, Senator McConnell, and now the mohawk up Mr. Trump, and go on and explain all kind of twist up mouth as to how that was to be interpreted and why they are now genuflecting before before Mr. Trump and why the effort to overthrow the a free and fair election in the the, the what is supposed to be the epi, the, the epitome of freedom in the world, the country that I suppose is that the most, should be uh, just simply forgotten. How that can go? What kind of people can believe that kind of contradiction and find sense in it? Please, you could tell me. Yeah? Well, that I suppose is 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 one element. Of course, we in Jamaica are, are suffering alongside as spiritually as one can the people in Ukraine are having such a difficulty. And I'm wondering what it means, and if it means anything serious, when the Russian uh, leader, Mr. Putin, is telling uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations that they have complete their military exercise in Mariupol. So what? The people there are going to not be subject to the same kind of, of bombardment and death and distress and dislocation? I don't understand. What could be the motive Yes, I hear all the talk about needing a, 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 a warm water port and all of the expansionist theories that are at stake. Hey, life can, can, can be subordinated to all of them thing. Can it be? Because, you know, why am I going into this? Some, some people say, I know, for, for we war. <laughs> well, Lisa Hanna put the, put the cap on that yesterday in the parliament in Jamaica because she pointed out how food insecurity is being fueled and ag- aggravated by what is going on in Ukraine. And we'll say more about that a little later on when Bernard Charles and Derek Delroy Chuck are with us. But let me just tell you, humanity is the key thing. You know, If you don't respect everybody's humanity, and if you don't try for some consistency of your reasoning, then it is very difficult to, to see progress in our future. 
that this is what distinguishes human beings, that we are able to reason, that we are able to think consistently, and that we have concern for our kind. Even animals do. So this is the problem. We need to, 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 to really uh, exercise ourselves and appreciate that, that any struggle, any diminishment of humanity is in fact uh, a diminishment of our own. And so we little Jamaica have to have our morals, have to have a standard which is higher than plenty of those who are uh, in rich positions and have a whole heap of media access and a whole heap of power. Yeah? Teaching the children to think straight, teaching the thing and to ch children to think compassionately, to deal with each other, recognize the, the dignity of the human person, whatever you look like, whether you're here tall or, or, or you're bald. Yes, these are the important things. I'll be asking Deroy to talk about this thing at KC with the, the hairstyle. He, he's a graduate of KC, you know. Yes? But listen to me. I don't think that a per I don't think that a person should be excluded from the class because, uh, yes, okay, Professor Basil Wilson is a case. He's a Fortis man. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, that your hairstyle should be enough to keep you out of class. But I also believe that school rules must be followed. And Kingston College has a, an extremely uh, excellent uh, administration Michael Vassiano, the chairman of the board, uh, the members of that board, buttressed by the, the strong connection with the Anglican Church in, in Jamaica. Casey's an Anglican school. Mr. Dave Murray is by any account one of the finest and highly, most highly regarded principals in principles of schools in, in Jamaica. And therefore, I'm not ab about to, to, to go off on some angry tangent on that. If, if it is a rule of the school that you comport yourself in a certain way, then you must accept that. This is, not no, this is no breach of your human rights um, that, that requires any, any, any huge protest, you see? So if, if, if you're, and, and if your resistance to that rule is some kind of rebellion, which has no basis in principle, then I'm also prepared to say that, that, is, that, that you should fix yourself before you go back to KC. So let's, let's get a, a, a clear picture on that one. But we don't need to drive each other to the wall. Yeah? And some people just decide that they're going to dress themselves, put, put, put themselves in a way that is go that irrespective of the school rules or the, the organizational standards that they are connected with, that they must do what they feel like. I don't agree with that, you know. Yes, that is a debasement of the, of, of the principle of individual liberty. If you take it to that extreme and you are, you are contemptuous of institutional regulation or of the inconvenience and outrage that you cause other people, then you are wrong. And by, by forcing people into these extreme positions, we do injustice to the entire liberal tradition, the whole texture of human rights. So these are thoughts that I share with you, and you're, you're more than welcome to challenge them, you know. I don't know the full details, but we'll, we'll perhaps find out more from these two uh, very, very engaged gentlemen. I'm concerned with a, a, a position taken by... A, opposition spokeswoman on foreign affairs, Lisa Hanna, yesterday in the parliament, where she raised the issue about uh, protecting Jamaican producers when they are hopelessly uncompetitive. Now, uh, recently, the government announced that they might be reducing the tariff, the very high tariff on importing chicken, in order that people could get access to cheaper product. Well, this morning, Agriculture Minister Charles has indicated that, that they're not going to proceed with that because there was such an outcry from broiler farmers and small farmers whose livelihood would have been compromised if the cheaper imports were, were available. Okay, but Lisa makes a point, you know. Lisa says, look here, if you have to have an industry which can only sell because you have 200 and plus percent on imports. You can't sustain that forever. She makes a point about Irish potatoes, that the, the cost of local production, locally produced Irish potatoes, is, I, I believe the figure she used was 70% higher than imports. So how can you continue to do that 
who, 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 who gets protected? Well, clearly the producers in those sheltered industries. But what, what kind of marketplace is that? Now, um, there, there, there must be a counter argument that says that you want to, to, to uh, incentivize local production and that it's more than just the cost to the consumer. It is the benefit of employment, of investment by, the, by local uh, producers, local capitalists. And that's true. But there has, a, there has to be a trade-off. And I think there's, there's room for a very intense discussion as to what we should be emphasizing production of. She says produce pepper, produce ginger, produce mango. These are products that Jamaica can produce and which have an extreme competitive and qualitative advantage. Yes? Now, our economy has done, gone in a different way. We have, we, have, we have emphasized import substitution, often to the detriment of the consumer and to the benefit of uh, a small group of persons, sometimes a larger group, um, who are able to participate in that industry. And that's the way the government apparently is continuing to go. Is that the right way for Jamaica? What do you think? You know, this program, this station is kind of different from others, you know. We don't, we don't, we don't just report what uh, big people are saying. We invite your input. We invite your concerns. We invite us to have some of the discussions on the hard topics that are difficult to determine but which are critical to our future in this country. What are the suite of products in addition to the pepper, the ginger, and the mango lemon? What are the other products that we could produce so efficiently find such good markets for that we would be able to substitute for the some of the other efforts some of the other engage, uh, items that we import so freely let's face it unless we earn the foreign exchange we're not going to be able to pay for the imports too too long you know and what's going to happen is just what is happening right now, where the cost of imported food particularly is crushing people. That's the story in the Gleaner today. It's causing a food crisis. Yes, I don't know about you, wherever you are, here in Jamaica or abroad, but the, 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 to, to buy the same basket of goods per week now is costing you indeed 25% more. The World Bank says it's probably going to be an, a 37% increase over the year. Whose income, let me ask you this, whose income is going up by 37% just to keep, keep, keep level? Yeah? And if not, what do you do? You either borrow or you reallocate your expenditure, which is very hard to do. It reduces your quality of life, probably. Or you eat less. Yeah? And that's the hard choice that has to be faced and discussed. And when we don't talk about that, when we, 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 we talk about sleeveless um, dress in Parliament and who we wear necktie, yes, we are idle. We are, we, we, are, we are deflecting serious matters and we are ignoring the main considerations of the people. Yeah? So I want to telegraph to Jamaicans abroad today. Just illustrate, brethren, sistrin, yes, is food we, we, we're short of right now. People are having a hard time. And that means, for example, that the foods, food to the elderly, it means that the, the work of institutions like food for the poor, it means that school feeding program have to take up plenty slack, plenty, plenty slack. I hear it being put forward in the United States, in England, how much more in Jamaica, yeah? And local production is, is, is so critical, critical in particular in those things that we can sell for foreign exchange, but critical also also, so that we can fill our own plates. Yeah, Lisa say that plenty of Jamaica have the belly full, but they're still hungry. Yeah, why? How are we going to live that way? How are you going to raise picnic? How are you going to have a cohesive society if that's the case? These are the big questions on the public eye and the open mind. On the bridge, 99 FM. Soon link you with Delroy Chuck, the long, long-serving Minister of Justice. I have a whole heap of questions for the Fortis man. Soon come. 
This is a public eye on the bridge, 99 FM, broadcasting to Jamaicans all over the world. That's what we do. Pernell and I are going to be starting a new fe feature on the bridge on Sunday. We're broadcasting to the United Kingdom. 4 o'clock Jamaica time till 6. You can calculate what it's going to be in Britain. The Bridge 99 has now made a good connection with English radio station and gives us a chance to send a message across the pond to make sure, already happening, the particular feature is going to begin on Sunday where we can look at all issues of Jamaica and public affairs uh, from two sides of the, of the political spectrum, come to a consensus and engage people who live far away in England but who have propped up empire, done well for themselves, are the backbone of the English working class, if only people would understand, and who, for whom there is a debt not only of gratitude but of compensation for the amount of West Indian blood that has been shed for the English polity, for the English nation. Controversial views? Well, that's, we call it straight. You're welcome. If you want to, uh, to, to contest it, you can always get in touch with us. Honorable Delroy Chuck, welcome. Morning. Hi, good morning, Ronnie. Uh, Pernell is with you too, I understand. I gather he's going to come in shortly. He's just, no? just, 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 uh, we, we, we can't do without him, you know. <laughs> no, no, I just want it. It doesn't matter. You, we can proceed. We can. So. We, he, he'll join us in a minute. Um, no problem. B b b a domestic issue, kind of, but your view, please, Delroy. You're a KC old boy, a Fortis man. Yeah. What's your thought about the, the, this issue of students being, uh, being, being excluded because of their, their condition of their hair? Well, to be frank, Ronnie, I saw the headline. I don't know the exact nature of it, but obviously, you know, I think the ministry is going to take a position. For instance, I know that our position, if you are a raster, you should be allowed to be able to wear the locks. Um, the, I think the question, Ronnie, is a question of how unkempt the hair is. Or, I mean, if you're wearing, you know, a lux, I understand that. But is it that, I mean, you know, you can come in, in any year style? I, I have no difficulty, you know. I have no difficulty to say you can come with, with whatever year style you want to come in. But the, the issue that will arise is whether or not it is what, what position, you know, the school takes in terms of whether it, you know, it. It, it looks untidy. Well, that's it. that's the issue, isn't it? The issue of tidiness is a critical thing. Yeah. If you if you um if if uh, it's, is it reasonable? You think to, to for a school to say whatever your hairstyle, it must be tidy. Now, tidy can be a very subjective uh, definition, but yeah. it seems to me that is 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 where you should start and have some clear definition or clear indication of what that means. Eh? Sure, sure. You see, my view is that. There has to be a stance, one way or another, and the minister, I understand, will be stating its position because it's the same in terms of your uniform running. Yeah. You know, should you be able to wear a uniform that looks unkempt? Yeah. Or, you know, messed up? Uh huh. You see, so one has to maintain some standards. Well, this is it. The most important thing is that if it is your hairstyle, then you must be allowed with that hairstyle. Yes. But to the extent that it, it is not, um, it seems as if it is not, it is not, it is unkempt. Yes. And you're, you're, you really, it's not your hairstyle, you just forget to comb your hair here, yes. <laughs> you know, as the case yes. may be. I think, I think in a but, sense, I mean, there must be some leeway for school to say at least make sure that if you are a raster, you say you are a raster and you are allowed to wear a, a raster hairstyle. If you want to wear lock, not locks, um, braids, 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 fine, you know? <laughs> well, no, that, that can take you very far. Um, <laughs> exactly, let, that's the problem. Let, let's welcome the Honorable Colonel Charles Senior. Good morning, sir. Morning. I, uh, I wasn't late. I was listening to you and got carried away while you're reading my script that yes. I wrote. Boy, you see, Deroy, what's, <laughs> what's happening? Um, yes. Pernell and I coming from two absolutely different perspectives. I, I find ourselves agreeing on most things, you know. How that happen? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I guess it's association. Del, <laughs> Del, Del Roy, Del Roy, I think you can say to him, I don't know, he used to be on the same side. <laughs> um, 
but run it the yeah. question of Casey uh-huh. and the students. Yeah. Why are you telling me I cannot run my yard? Yeah. When I said to you, this is how the school is run. Yeah. And you choose to come, yeah. your parents accept, and you come and say, you want to run it your way. Yes. I mean, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because Delroy is a, is a, is a Casey old boy. And the right. fact of the matter is that Casey has one of the finest principals and the best uh, 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 organized schools in this country. There's no question about that. They don't do things of an arbitrary and a discriminatory nature. Yes. And therefore, I really feel that we need to know why they would have what, what standards they would have taken. And if our students and our parents sign up for a school, albeit a school that receives government support, it is still an Anglican school. Yes? It doesn't matter what a school, Whichever it is. when you are signing up, yeah. you know you agree the to, standard you agree that to the school certain rules. So you don't like KC, go to BC, go to yeah. JHB. <laughs> Well, no, you, you, know, you know, Ronnie no, and, no. and Pernell, when I was at Casey, yes. one of the disciplines that prefects had to engage in yes. is to go around the school and ensure that the boys' ties were properly put to their, to their, their uh, throat. Yes. yes. In other words, they could have hang it down uh-huh. halfway. Uh-huh. We had to pull it right up to the neck yeah, that, so that they, you look, you know, properly and formal. Did, you, that, you know? did, that, did that prejudice you or, or trouble you? Was it was was it a imposi- no. um, imposition oh. on your personal freedom, Mister Chalk? Not at all. Oh. Because we felt that once you're in the school, uh-huh. you must wear your tie properly. Yeah. Yes. And, but uh, uh, but and then this goes to a deeper thing because that, that we impose. Yes, but so, pe- the, the, this age has a view. Um, mm-hmm. Pernell and I often talk about this: that the, the the standard of freedom, individual autonomy, means that I can do anything I please. Yes, and that cannot be right, Ronnie. Yeah, because and that we've... is why certain standards will have to be maintained. Yeah. If the school feels that you know you should at least have your hair, should not have it on camp. Uh-huh. I, I well, right. that what the that right mean? of the student uh, of the t- school to, to impose certain standards. Yes. What that means that everybody would have the rights. Yes. So but because the there are forty students Anarchy. and they want forty rights, yeah. the school say, "All right, I tell you what, we as a school and its board and its directors want to set a standard. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't come here. Yeah, but but got, if you come here, you have to adopt that standard. Yeah, but there must be something. Ronnie, I have a different home than yours. Yeah. My father it, used it, to it, beat it, it, me it, it, if I do anything wrong. Mm. You see, like, Ronnie, it is I like... Don't, I, no longer, I no longer... This, this minister of health mm-hmm. gave me a pamphlet mm-hmm. that said to me, school your children, mm-hmm. but school them with love. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. what the, how, how do you do that? You know, beat them, no. And, and I said, the coke had gone, mm-hmm. the switch gone, mm-hmm. the rod gone. I saw my little grandson you, you told us. testing his finger. Yeah. I told you, yeah. testing his finger in a fan. Yeah. And normally, I would have slapped him yeah. and let him cry. I said, come here, grandpa finger just gone. Mm-hmm. He said, no, he has to cut it off. And he said, no, and he held on to it. So, and I walk up and he ran behind me. So we better go. him with love. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's a clear standard there, Roy. Um, yes. And there are going to be p- points of tension, are they not, between excess, reasonable exercise of personal autonomy and the sure. rules of an organization? But the no, problem I, you is... Know, I, I mean, a, a school must set some standard. That is not to say, you know, Ronnie, that, for instance, if a person is, say, arrested... No, if you have religious, have religious right. grounds, I, 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 res- I should, respect those. Should. Yes, they should, um, yes. Be, you know, yes. admit to students. Yes. No, that's, that, yes, that's, but, a, that's but, a different thing. Well, well, Delroy, that is a completely different thing. No, no, when I you, can't, when I you can't. go to When you go to apply for your child to go to school and you say to the principal, my child is a rasta, he doesn't cut his hair, he will tell you how to comb it, he will tell you how to come in with it, mm. how to have it. Now, if you're going to come in and you want to use the cliche of rasta, not a man, as if Russia is not. Russia is a normal man like me. Right. I think you got, got, got the point. I wanted to, to, to exercise in the time we have, Deroy and Pernell, myself, um, with, with, with a number of issues. One is, Deroy, what is a politically exposed person? You know, Ronnie, <laughs> <laughs> I find that absolutely amazing. <laughs> 
Because, I mean, my wife and my children are now being deemed politically exposed people. Mine too. So, huh? And you're, you're, still, you're still in office. I have Both Pernell and I have retired from office. And yet right. I went to the bank yesterday, Mr. Charles, Mr. Chuck. Yes? yes? And I had to make certain declarations. Not only me, but my children. Every time they, they go and do any business, they, 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 have, they are put to special pains because yes. their father w became a leper. A, a, an economic, a banking leper by yeah. being politically yeah. involved. Mr. Chalk, is that justice? Minister of it Justice, please. Be. It cannot be. And, you know, I, I resist and resent the idea mm. that because I am serving in politics, in yeah. public life as a politician, yeah. that my family must go through yeah. all the various questioning. I mean, they, they, <laughs> if you ask me... <laughs> It is almost impossible for them to open an account without not being asked certain questions. You know, relationship with your father. I mean, can you imagine that? Uh? Yes. Ronnie, we'll tell you, Leroy, that we have been mourning about how we manage and run our politics. It yes. is we who have done that. We talking to one another, fighting one another, fighting for power. We tell somewhat lie on one another that the public just deal with us that way. Every politician is a thief. It doesn't matter if you wear uh, uh, what to call your thing. Clerical <laughs> color. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and let me tell you, Ronnie, my son, and he's going to hate me if I say this, but I'm going to say he has a master's in law from George Washington University. Sure. And what he gets as pay for a minister, yes. he could make that doing two projects <laughs> Two weeks? Yes. Well, and he decided well, he's going to get mixed up well, Queen, like me Queen's and you. Queen's Council, Chuck, um, yeah. and, and myself would have the same experience. Yeah, right. Yes. Mr. Chuck yeah. has an attorney who's yeah. a daughter. Is attorney. Absolutely. And you too. Yes. But they, they, my, my family basically go towards uh, pharmacy bills, donations, etc., etc. Exactly, sir. And, and, and people don't recognize this, and undoubtedly there have been um, breaches. But what, what, what I, the point I wanted to get across is that you don't, we, we do not help in the, in, in the struggle against corruption by making all those who opt for public service mm. to be some kind of pariahs and to visit it on our children who have no, and our wives or husbands who right. have no in, engagement is, 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 in my view, morally wrong and practically bankrupt. I just well, you, know, you know, Ronnie, to be frank with you, in my case, yes. whatever they ask me, I have nothing hiding. No. I don't even lock my drawer or anything. Yeah. So, you know, they asked me a question, I said, yes. How long have you been serving? Tell them. You know, so, but I think it is wrong yeah. well, that they should be asking my wife and children this question and labeling them as politically exposed. Yeah. Well, 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 I just hear somebody ball out in, in, in the workplace. Uh -huh. All right. So if him is that bright, uh -huh. why am I going into politics? Yeah, because, Something the most in there? No. no. Hold on. That is what some people That think. is it. But you, you said it right a little earlier. We have brought that upon ourselves. Uh, yeah. You know, you know Ronnie, when I was... Yeah, some of us, like Del Roy. When I was entering politics in Ronnie um, in 1995, when I announced that I was entering, you know the view on campus was, Trump not have enough. What more he want? <laughs> well, yes. Well, <laughs> there you are. But the, 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 therefore... And, and to be frank with you, politics has cost me many, many millions of dollars. I don't think there's any one of us who would say otherwise. <laughs> um, and, yes. and, 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 and therefore, what we have to do is to clean up that situation. Why don't you let absolutely. me disturb you? Yes. You and Delroy are two Rhodes scholars. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. You don't believe you could come to Parliament to work for $4 million a year and have to give away $10 million. Where you get the other five from? <laughs> People say, you're thief it. No. Is your wife money or your friend money? Because you cannot survive. No. And, and yet, and yet, and yet we and yet, are pariahs. And then when you, when Mr. Charles and Mr. Chuck bridge ni bridge ninety nine audience, when when all three of us were in Parliament two years ago, and I argued as strongly as I could for some better remuneration for our p parliamentarians, particularly in respect, even just in respect of health insurance, no consideration whatever. You because, because you vote me down and run me out. Because you were you. Were <laughs> Are, you are a rebel among your own. <laughs> Not because no. if we ever up yes. the thing on our side, yes. 
Your water loan couldn't so, take us so, off the so, platform. So, Delroy, after, 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 after the many years that you have had in public life, are you pleased with the political culture? I'm not at all, Ronnie. I mean, there's no doubt that a lot of cleaning up needs to be done. Um, I certainly have, you know, speak out and I urge, yeah. you know, everywhere I go, uh-huh. anyone who is engaged in corruption, expose them. Right. Um, I also make it a point of duty to let it be known that my role in politics is to, uh, you know, to see what contribution we can make. And I try to interact with not only my constituents, but generally with Jamaicans and anyone. As you can see, I really resist and interview sometimes my colleagues I chat too much. But the truth of the matter, if you're going to be a politician, you must be available to the public. Yes. And you must be able to respond <coughs> And we, and we admire you for that, for for the openness, but and also for the fact that you don't you 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 don't you don't appear to be a tribalist, which is a which. No, which not is, at all. And in fact, Ronnie, I can tell you one of the reasons <laughs> why we have no political conflicts in Northeast. I go around and tell people you have a right to vote for who you want to vote for. Right. right. You know, and I, I I mean I can tell you, and I say not only that. There must be no political divide yeah. in the constituency. Well, no, fancy that, an MP saying right. that. That's, that's No, I make it very clear. I, I, go that's down admirable. To, I go down to Morgan Lane by myself. I go across Barbican by myself. Those were traditionally PNP um, eras. And I say, listen, man, you, it is your right to vote for the PNP. So, you know, as, and I say, but allow those who want to vote for the JLP to vote for the JLP. Well, why do why I, you think other colleagues don't accept that principle? Because Well, uh, I have no idea, but I can tell you, better. even in Grand Spen Avenue, uh-huh. I beg and urge labor rights. If they are PNP in Grand Spen Avenue, they have a right to vote PNP. And you, can look and, and you can look at the PDs over the last four or five elections. Mm-hmm. There is no particular PD that is... Say 100 or 90 percent JLP or PNP. Well, that's uh, that, that's important. Uh, Delroy, probably I, another man is shouting that you can only say that because you know they are more liberated in the constituency, more PNP. No, not at all. When <laughs> when I came in, when I came in at one time, it was well slightly more. Remember, you know, in '93, it was, when Carlene Curley won in '92, it was 50-50. Yes. Okay. And in 97, I only won 50% of the vote. And, and, and the other person won how much? The, the other 50%? No, in, no, no, no. Well, no, no. Oh, remember, it was um, PNP won 35, and the NDM at the time won 15. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. But, That's but a, that crazy. By 2007, I got 68%, and that has been my figure since then. I want to take you, a little, take you on to sure. another matter. Why does Delroy Chuck, re- re- reputed human rights lawyer, um, a man with a liberal conscience. Why do you appear to support mandatory sentences when you know they don't work? Well, the truth of the matter is, is not that I support mandatory sentence, but what has um, basically, in fact, my position has always been a maximum. You get me? And uh, sure. the discretion must remain with the judge. Yeah, well, I, so that's so good to hear. The maximum. So, so I expect, I expect that the Roy Chuck. Man of conscience, man of legal principle, jurisprudence will take that step when it comes to the passing of this piece of legislation that's oh, before the position Carl, that the position that that no. uh, right. you, you, uh, you, right. you have me. some illiberal no, fascists. No, let, me, let me just explain the position that we have taken there. The feeling of the uh, of my colleagues is that, especially in gun crimes, the signal should be sent to the judiciary that there should be a definitive imposition of a sentence that send a signal to gun criminals. Delroy, that that is, that you, you couldn't accept that, given what you said. You, no, no, no. You one second, one, bi- one go second, ahead. One, mm-hmm. no. what, what we're really saying is that the police have complained bitterly that they're finding people with guns who have been dangerous. And some of them have been given one okay. less than five years. Some of them have been given suspended sentence. But you, slap, you, you know, you, you know no, that. One second, Ronnie. What I would argue, and I've, I think it will be, should become a part of the bill, that where the person has been found with a gun, mm. and he can assist the prosecution or the police mm. to say where that gun mm-hmm. 
came from or assist the prosecution in any other way, mm-hmm. then that mandatory minimum sentence will not apply. Minister Chuck, the, yes. you, you know the legal history as well as I do. Yes. Um, certainly, I spent the first many years of my practice, Purnell, def- defending people who had a few grains of ganja because the minimum sentence was 18 months. Remember that? Yes. There was no d- decrease in ganja use at all. We, 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 you, you all remember the, the gun court uh, provision of indefinite detention, yes? yes. W- b- mandatory. Did it work to reduce violence and gun, and, and gun toting? No. And it is, it have, we found, have we found a solution yet? What, 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 we, we may, what we must not do is to repeat the mistakes of the past. I accept and that. demean And demean the judiciary in the meanwhile, because inherent in a mandatory sentence is an argument, is a, is a position that you're taking, even if you don't say it, that the judge cannot properly make a, disc- a, a decision, and therefore the parliament must, must, must insist that he, his hands are tied. That is wrong. No, no, yes. Oh, no, that no, if, but running, running. That Ronnie, was, uh, one minute run back. discussion with the judiciary. Yeah. Always the judiciary is saying it is the duty of Parliament to indicate to the judiciary the quality or the nature and, and length of sentence. So you do that, that you, you do that by a mandatory sentence, which, well, which, which well, doesn't, Ronnie, doesn't indicate anything. Yeah, no, what it does is to handcuff the, them as much no, as the criminal. No, the question of the mandatory sentence is something which, you know, may be modern and constitutional principles. Of course it does. Because and, then you, you, and you have people who are QC in your, in, in, in your camp, Delroy, who are supporting that? Ronnie, Ronnie, you, Delroy. This is, re- this Delroy, is reproachful. Delroy, Delroy, hold on a minute, Delroy. Yes, let uh, me Ronnie, help. Ronnie, Ronnie, let me before Parliament for discussion, you know. Let, let me help you and, with and what, and what position is the government taking? What position is Mrs. Malahu for taking, Mr. Horace Chang taking? One, 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 one which would not only defies history, defies every judicial jurisprudential principle possible. And, and, and people, people like us, uh, obviously in a different capacity, I understand the responsibility, joint and several of a cabinet minister, but we, we, have to, we have to point out this is not the way. Ronnie, let me help Delroy. Really? Delroy is not <laughs> going to say it. I can now say it. Yes, sir. The democracy that we practice uh-huh. in Parliament right. is also practiced in the cabinet. Uh-huh. So if Delroy and two or three others... Mm-hmm. In a cabinet of 12, mm-hmm. decide that what you, Ronnie, just said mm-hmm. should be the thing. Mm-hmm. And the other nine or so decide that I say uh-huh. it goes. Okay. We have a Ronnie, democrat. You, uh, Hold I think on. Ronnie should be aware of that. No, 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 no. Well, I'm no, no. Yes, Ra- no. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, wait, wait. Ronnie was in a cabinet <laughs> where Ronnie had a problem. Ronnie has two problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what he is, what he does, yes. where he comes from, right? And his voice cannot be like yeah. I was. Yeah, that so <laughs> and, and, and that's <laughs> the point, Ronnie. You see, you might argue your position at cabinet, but once it comes across as a government position, you stand by that government well, position. You, know, you yeah. couldn't do otherwise. Well, oh, what, yes. a, what? And a government position is made up of so, the amount of votes. So what? Re- so what? <laughs> what le- 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 well. Let's leave that one because we're not getting anywhere on that. That that is a totally indefensible one. I can understand. Tell me, though, Minister of Justice, we, we, you have you have done so much in your efforts to try and uh, and and reorganize and improve the justice system, Mm -hmm. and we are still setting criminal cases now, Mr. Charles, for for trial two years time, three years time, and five years, and five years. Look at that, and we are setting civil cases five years time, and and where 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 Delroy issues that are tangential to justice. Um, not contentious issues, but issues, for example, that have to do with the, 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 the conveyancing of land, the, the processing of deceased estates. It is, even when you want to pay government money, yes, it well, is Ronnie, taking let, you let w- just, months yeah. and weeks. How are we going to change this? We really well, rely Ronnie, on you. Ronnie, just let me say this, and I hope I will be able to have some figures uh, when I speak next week yes. to show okay. that there have been significant Sectoral. improvements. Uh-huh. But we still have a very, very far way to go. Right. So you take the question of probate, uh-huh. which is just what you mentioned a while ago. Yes, it is. It's not possible. The average time for probate is about 16 months. Yeah. But there are 
probator now being done in less than three months. Yes, and then when you but, go to pay the duty at the stamp office, Mr. Chuck, it takes you, it takes you six no, months. I, and, and, and Ronnie, you know, which, what, what is really you know, but very, you don't very, very to sad? Pay the, yes, you, you can't. No, the, the you know, Ronnie, what is really very, very sad is the inefficiency. Yes. The poor service yes. that you get right across this society. Yes. It's not only in the public sector, no. you know. But, but uh, you know, but, one but of the, the public sector is where we pay for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, hold on, but, and who and who are now going to be reclassified <clears throat> and get more money? And our esteemed Minister of Finance, and I, I believe I treat him as such, <clears throat> has said not a word about increased productivity. But so there has to be increased productivity. W- 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 when you hear that in the argument, please, sir. No, no, but there not has word, to be because word. if you start to pay people properly yeah. and they are not performing, yeah. then then action should be taken. But you know that can't happen. No, you see, Ronnie, let me put it to you. I lament, you know, from coming from the private sector, yes. that when you go to pay your taxes at the tax office, yes. it takes you half a day. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to go to, ta- to the office to pay taxes. Anymore. No, but many, many times people, and many don't, people don't have the privilege online. of technology. Right. right. But could we, so, let's get back. Just give me 10 seconds to go back to a point. Yes. When the police are bringing in 30 and 40 criminals, a week. Who says they're criminals? Uh, well, what do you call it? Innocent until proven guilty. You believe that? Okay, yes. Uh, okay. Should we say accused? Yeah. So, okay, so, so let us say... Accused. Accused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where on earth are you going to get judges uh-huh. to try 300 of these people per week? You don't have that many. Uh, what? First, first of all, Actually, no, you don't. Pernell, Pernell, may I just say... We're getting in excess of 30,000 criminal cases across the island. Really? Perfect. A year? <laughs> and uh, uh, well, you, you, I, I was, uh, Pernell is right then. So, yes, uh, but he's the, right. the question then is, 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 is the crime problem beyond our jurisprudence? Can the Minister of Justice speak to that, please? No, uh, there's, it, there's no doubt in my mind that the truth of the matter is that many of them may be simple matters. And so the judges, you know, should try and deal with them as expeditiously as possible. The evidence must come in. Some of them, uh, we, have, we have encouraged the parish court judges to use restorative justice to Excellent. deal with them. Excellent. And as restorative justice is reducing the burden on the court significantly. Yeah. And in the civil cases, uh, this is an era running that I've started and I will be pushing very heavily yeah. over yeah. the next few months. Mediation. Yes, I'm part so, of that. And I, and I commend you. Um, and, d- and I think d- that exemplary. over the next... Yeah. Over the ne- this, 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 but but this that, still, that still doesn't solve the problem there, Roy. You know, it helps. I know, I know, but but the, the position, Ronnie, is that we're having far too many cases come into court uh-huh. which can be dealt with if the parties yes. could use alternative dispute resolution within their communities, within their homes, within their, 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 their neighborhoods. What we're suggesting to parties, before you take up litigation matters, yes. could you try and yes. go to the justice center and see if you can get a mediator to deal with it? Which, of course, which, of course, although time is running out on us, takes us to yes. the question of the justice of the peace and right. your, your insistence on of, of an expanded role and, of course, the honesty and, 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 and integrity. No, what, what, what we're encouraging with most of them, Ronnie, is that they can be trained as restorative justice facilitators yes. and as mediators. And if they need to earn a living, mm-hmm. then they could so operate as a sure. facilitator or a mediator, but not accepting payment as a JP. Yes. The, you the, see, so you, you can be trained, and we're actually paying for people sure. to be trained as mediators and restorative justice facilitators. Excellent. Excellent. So JPs right. who need that sort of assistance can use those offices to earn a living. Delroy, I want to congratulate you. Yeah. And I recall sitting in Parliament as Speaker when you make presentation on many occasions, the people on the left of me congratulate you because what my co-host, my brother, is saying <laughs> here is something that we'd like to see done. Now, right. you have brought on a lot of development, a lot of improvement. Why can't we involve the church leaders more. Oh, hold on. Oh, Pernell, Pernell. The easiest man to bring two members together, even Pernell. from Adventist and Catholic, <laughs> is, is a church man. 
but but at Fernell, least. that is a, in fact every month Fernell and Ronnie, I'm going to the church is the Seventh Adventist Church on a Saturday, and a traditional church on a Sunday to urge the pastors to participate in this alternative dispute resolution process. Excellent. And it should be a condition for the appointment as a justice of the peace too. There are we so and in fact um, this weekend I will be in Portland. Yes. I've served as fifty for fifty years as a justice of the peace, you see. And the, the training is much better now than it ever was, but it is very important that the justice of the peace and the this the district constable in the community yes, that yes. Pernell, Pernell's right. father was <coughs> be the, the, the local ministers of justice if you please absolutely yes. yes and i think that is well i'm so glad for your, your, your um, that is what i'm promoting ronnie yes, yes that's that true. justice should be taken into the community Very well. rather than the people having to go to court to get justice yes uh, time has run out on us. I, we have to another have, time. Well, we no, can another time ab about your comments on on the breakdown on, and therefore the need for restoration of family life in the country. Minister, Absolutely. Minister no of problem. Justice, another Honorable time. Delroy Chuck, you've you've honoured us today. Thank you so much. Good, good. The public eye on the bridge ninety nine. Pernell and myself joining Ira Jam shortly. Soon come back. As we join Ira Jam Radio and Beauregard in New York. Good afternoon, sir. Nine FM. <laughs> Public eye, open mind. Are you there? Yes, sir. And Good I'm afternoon, gentlemen. We're greeting you, Colonel Charles <laughs> and Ronnie Thwaites, greeting the Greetings. audience of Arijam Radio. You're, you're ahead of us. You're an hour ahead of us through your own alchemy. But we nevertheless yes. welcome you. Thanks so much. What's on your mind today? What's your, what, what are your listeners talking about, Bo? Well, it's always a pleasure making the connection to um, the Bridge 99 FM to speak with you, gentlemen. And thank you very Over much. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, overall, we're experiencing some great weather here in the New York City area. Kind of nippy for some folks still, but um, we're getting through it. But what's on a lot of people's minds are the pen release that's coming up. Um, it starts actually starts tomorrow up until Saturday. So, you know, we, we big up all the student athletes that are coming in for the pen release and also, you know, from the J Jamaica and all over the Caribbean and those from the tri-state area who are also participating. So a lot of people, a lot of diasporans will be converging on Pennsylvania for this event this weekend. So it's going to be something big. That's great. And Jamaica Bickle will be in, 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 in full yes, force indeed. again with Erwin yes, Clare. Man. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, you we know we thank a, them for providing, you know, the tr so, um, some of the a, transportation, yes, man. the food. This is a movement yeah. of, in the diaspora that welcomes and feeds and attends to, particularly yes. the athletes at the pen relays. Yes, true indeed. Um, yes. Helping out with a lot of I, accommodations. I would like to ask our friend in New York to put an item on the agenda. What's that? <coughs> Ronnie, we train nurses, they're gone. We train doctors, they're gone. We have some of the first lot athletes yeah. in the world. Uh -huh. And I saw in the stand many schools in America, their chief, chief persons are here selecting. Yeah. So they go America and they don't come back. So this lady that spoke to us, uh -huh. I want to say to Ira Jam and all of them, tell them, don't forget they yard. Do they forget their yard, though, Bo? No, 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 no not no, just no. in a few dollars. Uh -huh. Some have to come back to help. Yes. And not only us make, make the sacrifice, yes. some have to yeah, come back yeah. and take the low salary and help the people. Some doctors, some lawyers, some teachers have to just pick up and come home. Okay, that's you know, um, good advice, but Bo, enough. let's hear you. Funny enough, you say that because there are a lot of people here in the diaspora who, you know, they come here and they, they work and they make the money and they really and truly miss their home and they, they don't feel comfortable here. So they go back home and they, you know, start their careers back where they're from. A lot of Jamaicans here, I know that, you know, um, they were here before and they have gone back home to work. So, you know, a lot of people are definitely doing what Chief Fernal Charles is saying. Well, I'm glad to hear and it's a good thing. But, but it's Ronnie, a, it's one, one last point. Sure. And that is not to say... I do not recognize yes. the fact that hell is popping at home and frightens a lot of them from coming back. That we, uh, they're saying, make home a little quieter. Make home a home for us. And we all will come home. I understand that. But, Ronnie, you came home. You came I home. I came. Yes. And mm -hmm. there are many of us who have to come 
in order to keep home home. That's true. But at the same time, we 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 we, we understand those who, for whatever reason, for fear. Make, make that decision. Yes. And <coughs> life is not easy and pretty because it's in North America or Canada or UK. You know. Yeah, you and I know uh, that. Beauregard can tell you that too. And sure so indeed. what we need to do is to, to, to be intentional in making ourselves welcome to each other and facilitating rather than getting in the way, don't? Yes, indeed. Listen. And you know, um, yes. funny enough, one, one quick point. Um, you, you talk about training our children and, and, and sending them off to work in the workforce all over the world. Um, just a transition to a <coughs> situation that I saw took place at um, Kinston College yesterday with the students that were locked out for proper grooming. Um, talking about training, um, is this the, the, the grooming that, we s that they're talking about, is this something that transition we all know it helps you in the workforce but how do you gentlemen feel about what people are saying that your hairstyle has to be a certain way to to, to actually learn we discussed that with, with um, minister delroy chuck also a kco boy and we're mm -hmm. going to discuss it in a minute with professor basil wilson who will, who will join us who is also a fortis man uh, right. i think the, the feeling we have is that the that school should be as 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 liberal as possible in terms of allowing um families, children who have religious or other good reason for a particular uh, hairstyle or, or standard of, of, of deportment. But mm -hmm. when you go to school, you have to follow the rules of the school. Yes. And if you right. sign up to the rules of the school, uh, then you can't you, break it in if, the middle. If you want to, if you want to deviate from it, you either have to have a very good reason, or you have to decide you're going to go somewhere else. I consult with the school leader. Well, th we don't you know. Can't just walk in no, and the school we don't, leader. We day. don't know the background. Eh? What is the basis of it? It sounded strange to me, but we're going to find out more, Bo, and you stay tuned. I'll be listening. Let's join Professor Basil Wilson, retired provost of the John Jay College in New York. Basil, hi, welcome. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to um, the former Speaker of the House. <laughs> How are you, sir? Fortis Cattery said non cedary. Pardon me? Fortis Cattery said non cedary. Yes, yes, Fortis, Fortis. <laughs> Fortis man. Professor Basil Wilson, boy, it, what it, it must seem culturally so, so, so distinct for you, eh? In the very liberal atmosphere of the United States where people wear anything they want to go to school and they, 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 they fix up their head and the other parts of their body like, like with ring and, and, and bells and all kind of thing. Um, and Kingston College, your alma mater is saying, listen to me, you have to have a certain standard of hairstyle before you can come in here. What do you think? Well, you know, I think one of the things about young people is that young people have to be disciplined. And part of the socialization and the discipline that has to be enforced in the high school. That's where the development takes place. And um, I think Kingston College has done an exceptional job in um, socializing. And I think the principal, Dave Mary, He's a first has class man. And making certain that, you know, that kind of discipline is adhered to. Yes, I want to hear from him on this one. He hasn't, he hasn't spoken out yet, but I, I don't think of him as being a person of illiberal views or, or one who would act arbitrary at all. So we really have to, to, to get to the bottom of this one before we make a judgment. Yes, and um, I, I, I've been at the school and I've seen Dave in action and he has always insisting insisted that the boys had to be dressed a certain way. They had to be groomed a certain way. Yes. Well, Professor, there are <coughs> schools in Jamaica yeah. that many of us frown against. I saw some girls on the street walking mm -hmm. and their dresses <coughs> six inches from the bo uh, them foot bottom. Mm -hmm. And man said, I mean, they all look on women, but they are so well dressed as far as they are concerned. Yeah. That is the standard of the school. Yeah. Now, if you're going to come and tell me you oppose their standard, mm -hmm. the school is going to say, we are preparing them for leadership, for family, for all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And the school and its faculty came together and they put a standard. Why should you, who don't even have a child in the school, out there to 
blast the professor, the, 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 the principal, yeah. that him say you have to come here. But no, you see. And we must free not but, to come but, here. But let, let's, let's test Professor Wilson because there are those who would argue. Look here, man free. All them kind of rule is British of hangover foolishness. You go tell that to Queen Elizabeth. Uh, it's, it's black man time now, and Pickney must <laughs> must 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 feel it's that they. Bro- it's a broke man time, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but, but and, and that and that people must be free to do to express themselves, and that what you're doing, they, they are they're actualizing their their individuality when they um, wear ring in their nose and and and. Uh, whatever it is on, the, on their head. No, I'm caricaturing Basil Wilson, but I think you understand that there is, a, there, there is an extremism to do with, with liberal values that is a, oftentimes at work in discussions like this, and it also seeps into political and personal life. But I think, I think in the academic setting, I think, for example, what one enforces at the university level Different. It's quite different from what one would enforce at the high school level mm-hmm. or at the junior level or at the elementary school level. And I think that sort of latitude becomes um, realizable in the, um, in a, while you're at a university or in grad school or undergraduate school. But I think high school is a different kind of experience. Yes. And I, I, I don't see how you can maintain social order in the high school unless there is discipline. Yes. Professor, I went to the University of the West Indies on a visit. And I could not know I was at a university. It was, this is some time ago. Uh-huh. What you saw? The kind of dress yes. that the students were in. Mm-hmm. I, I, I couldn't believe that. Why and guess it? what? Graduation came. Mm-hmm. And the next Monday morning, they all visit their dressmakers and and, and, and suit makers mm. to go to separate to, to apply for a job. Okay. So you're gonna tell me now <laughs> they are free on campus where they are being taught, uh-huh. they are being, you know, guarded Groomed. to go out. Mm. And the evening after graduation, mm-hmm. they have to throw away all of that. I don't agree with that. So you want you, but this this sounds like a conservative old gentleman hearkening after colonial times, Professor Wilson. There's something <laughs> in colonial that 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 are more, that, no, but that no, are but more pe- progressive. No, people are saying this. No, no. And the point before we take the short break is that it, it it this our age and our nation are conflicted with all kinds of di- divergent values. You know. Yes. And we need to be clear. Uh, uh, but but not arbitrary and not autocratic about them. Professor Basil Wilson, when we come back, one instance of this that is concerning me, and I really want to engage you today, is this issue of free speech. Because Twitter, that ubiquitous social medium, is now being bought out and privatized by the richest man in the world who has certain definitions of free speech, which may not be free at all. (laughs) When, When we come back on the public eye on the bridge with Ira Jams, Stay tuned. The Public Eye on the Open Mind, link with Ira Jam. This is a bridge 99 FM. It's 1225 in Jamaica, 125 in New York. Talking with Professor Basil Wilson, retired Jamaican-American academic. Colonel Charles is with me. Professor Wilson, Elon Musk has bought out Twitter, putting in his sole control, or uh, will be in his sole control, the determination of what news gets out and what news doesn't. Should we manage the, f- the, the flow of information, or is it to be absolutely free? Pernell and I are asking you. Well, Elon Musk has defined himself as a free speech absolutist. Now, I'm not certain that Mr. Musk has thought that through, hmm. because free speech can really be quite complex in the sense that there is hate speech, there is racist speech, there is incendiary speech. So that's a free to? And so it has to be some kind of content moderation, some kind of content decision making as to what is acceptable or what is unacceptable. Now, Elon Musk is really quite an increasing figure. I mean, he has argued that he has purchased the Twitter not just for money reasons, but um, he sees it as something that can advance democracy. 
Um, you know, he speaks sometimes in very lofty terms. He, um, in some respects, he's a humanitarian. He has been an entrepreneur that has been incredibly innovative. He certainly has this burning interest in artificial intelligence. He has this burning interest in self, um, self-driven uh, automobiles. He has been in the vanguard of electric vehicles and has really made quite a contribution in that regard. He has holdings in China, in Germany, in the United States. He claims he's not the richest man in the world. He says Putin is much richer. Oh, I'm, I'm sh- I think he's right there. But so what now? Money talks? Money defines free speech? I, w- one of the things that I find frightening, Ronnie, and, 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 and Pernell, mm-hmm. is that as we undergo this upheaval in communications and media, is that we see, we're see we seeing a concentration of rich people having access and control over this information mechanism. We saw it in terms of Rupert Murdoch, who I think has done a tremendous amount of damage to media in the United States with that concentration of power and the abuse of power. Um, we see, for example, if you look at somebody like Bezos, who is the owner of Amazon. He owns the Washington Post, but he's not involved in, in any kind of intrusive way. He owns it, but he allows the editorial board to make their decisions. That is quite different um, in terms of other media houses where they sort of push an ideological line that can be one-dimensional and can be detrimental, especially to the democratic process and especially at a time in the United States where democracy is floundering, this kind of concentration of power can also be quite dangerous. That can happen in Jamaica it's, too, you know, Prof. Wilson. Mr. Yes, Charles. yes. Yes, where but you have a concentration of ownership of the, mean, the, the media in ways that, that, that may appear to be oh, quite benign, but in fact serve a certain, a, certain, a certain set of purposes, which it's not hard to glean. But one of the things about Jamaican media and Jamaican radio, and even, uh, you know, is that with, the, with, with this technological revolution that has taken place, yes. take, for example, what we are doing at present. We are able to communicate with folks in Jamaica and folks in the diaspora yes. concomitantly. Yes. And that, that, that is really beneficial Very much not so. only to the, to, to the developmental process, in Jamaica, but also to the information um, knowledge um, makeup in the diaspora, and 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 that is how we can use media in such an innovative kind of way. What we find happening in the United States is that media have become far more polarizing um, than heretofore, and it is being used in in such a wedge way. It's really interesting to see what Elon Musk does with Twitter. Twitter is really not as um, uh, 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 as widely used as Facebook and some of the other um, really? media, media forms. I thought after but, Trump, Facebook, Twitter was, a, was a, the, the, the gold standard of social media. No, well, well I mean, you find a lot of class. governmental leaders okay. and a lot of decision makers using Twitter. Uh-huh. But in terms of mass use, yeah. Facebook it's far more popular than, <laughs> Prof, um, Prof, than Twitter. Prof, Prof, Prof I, just, I just was saying it to run here, kind of off the ear, and you have just hit it. Um, the management. Yeah. Most has some rights. Yeah. And that right Management, must, management of what? Of, of anything. Of, of any media. Any business. Okay, but... Yes, but even in... It, yeah. And it has to project it to what they think as a management group. Right. Is it acceptable to the majority? Yeah, but right now, sir, that's the whole point. Yes. It's because one man named Elon Musk, yes. with his own social background, with his own economic um, investments, etc., yes. yes. is going to be personally, it, 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 he's, a, he's, a, he, he's the final arbiter yes. of, of, of this very, very popular, even if it's not the most popular medium. I, I consider that to be dangerous, Basil Wilson. But you have to go I, further. I, I agree. I agree that it's dangerous, and in fact, it's undemocratic. Yeah. And one of the things that we have to think through, 
that in a democratic society, how do we set up media and information flow in such a way that it enhances democracy, that it, it takes into consideration the, 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 uh, the will and, and the aspirations of the, the vast majority of people who live in that society, and especially at a time when a, a lot of what we're doing has become transnational. Well, so when we have this concentration of media just being controlled by one very rich individual, whether it is Zuckerberg or it is Musk, it is unhealthy, and I, I think it's something that needs examination. And in fact, we, 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 one would expect Congress to really step in and do something to I, make I, certain. Professor, I recall, kind of I recall some time ago, the courts were asked to examine something at a court decision of break it up. Well, that's antitrust, yes. But I remember, you, Basil asks, and you will remember, Bernard, he will too, the, the model that Peter Abrams, God rest his soul, um, set up the original Radio Jamaica. Yes. Yes? yes. Where you had a diffuse shareholding among yes. various groups, interest groups in the society. Yes. Yes? Which me meant that no one grouping yes. had a, 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 a overweening majority. And that they would be responsible for policy, and they would would would, would at, keep at each other four. in order. And there were, and at that sometimes yes. there would be a meeting yes. where any of these ticklish, call it sure. ticklish matters, would be. would be put to a vote. Yes. No, 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 Basil. That 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 to me was was a very very wise way of of ensuring, a, 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 first of all. A, 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 a high level of freedom, but also an equally high level of responsibility. What do you think? Definitely. I, I, I think, in fact, what you have just outlined is very much um, in, in, in congruence with democracy. Yeah. That you don't really have just one or two people making all the decisions. I mean, if you, if you take even the political system, that in in the United States, rich people have a disproportionate amount of influence over the body politic. And, uh, you know, you can see it in terms of decision making. Take, for example, something as simple as climate change and fossil fuel. One of the reasons why we have, we have been so behind in, 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 in developing po policies that can, can wean us away from, from, um, from, from global warming is because of the influence of the fossil fuel industry who dominates congressional decision making. Yes. Some of that is, is, is changing now, but for a very long time, we, we, we did not have much of a climate change public policy because of the influence of fossil fuel. So any kind of concentration of wealth that, that, that can exercise that amount of power is in fact detrimental, and people who are committed to democracy should oppose vehemently. Yes. Professor, as a, as a one who has very little connection with engineering, because I did very bad, bad in maths <laughs> and <laughs> physics. I have been told that somewhere down the line, they are going to make a steam engine. Who is going to make a steam engine? A steam engine that water is going to run cars. Oh, I see. Okay. And I understand that the oil industry yes. would never allow that to happen. But, but, but you don't have to go that far. There were the, the the oil the oil cartel has a life in had a life in Jamaica as much as it did in the states as as Basil Wilson is telling us. I remember when the late Robert Lightburn was trying certain uh, 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 intrusions into how we secured oil at what price yeah. and for what purposes. Yes, and the gang up that took place against him. You see, he carried that to his grave. I I remember the details. I was b b close to him at the time. When you think of the hold, even on the price structure of of petroleum products, which certain marketing companies have in Jamaica right now, yeah. yes, the, it it is it, it it is a smaller iteration of the same thing that is bedeviling the U.S. Congress. Can yeah. we talk it straight on Bridge Ninety Nine, yeah. <laughs> Prof. Wilson? Uh, uh, so it's set. It can can't change. I mean, the forces of democracy seem to be in retreat. And we believe that the yeah. younger generation, the younger generation. That the philosophers, yeah. the physicians, well, all who are coming on would have so. a different philosophy. The but the self-interest seems to and be the paramount. protect it seems to come with what you, with us from the bottom up. What you say, Basil? Well, one of the things that we have seen that is a new development, and I think 
in many respects, Bernie Sanders uh -huh. has been a player in that. That you can raise millions of dollars to to um, small contribution. Yeah. And uh, in fact, also our friend Ob Donald Trump has also shown that. Obama and did it too. And 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 in the and in terms of American politics, that has in fact diminished somewhat the power of the fossil fuel industry, yeah. and also you know people who are you know who make these these big contributions. Uh -huh. And so, so that has been a change. And 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 I think if you look at, for example, when, when Biden was pushing his bill back better. What I mean, and what it really entails, expansion of the safety net. That breakthrough really came about because um, the small people with small contributions yes. were really having an impact on um, public policy. So we face a situation now then where, where what should be the public reaction to this news about Twitter and perhaps parallel um, news that we, we could craft or, or describe here in Jamaica. People have to be very careful what they listen to. People have to be very careful the judgments that they expect. Uh, uh, they, or they, many, they, people they might, many people might support. But, well, in truth, this but, is the point. Yeah, many, yeah, people, I, I, many people might say, I, as I, Professor was saying, we don't want it to be like Facebook. We don't want it to be like TikTok. Like a, we uh, want something to be at a standard well, the, that is acceptable. The, the, that would be good. And, if, they, and if, they put it out there, but if what is acceptable standard? If you're Lego Trump again on, on Twitter and his conspiracy theories. No, he probably would be out. No. <laughs> that if if Musk if Musk says that he's a, a, a free speech absolutist, he has no basis for keeping Trump off. I mean, in fact, I mean that's what he has already hinted. Yeah. But you see, what I am surprised about is the reaction and even the discourse taking about uh, 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 um, having to do with Elon Musk takeover of Twitter. Yeah. I mean, what people are um, people are not looking at it as something that is undemocratic. People, I mean, for example, even when Zuckerberg and others are called in front of the Congress and they are congressional hearings, they have not been able to do anything about this concentration of power. They end up um, talking and talking, but there's no legislation that follows that makes the system less um, concentration and, and uh, more democratic. But if you, and, I mean, Professor, I mean, your class, and I'm asking you this question: What is the difference between that position and a dictator? Well, it, there's not much. There is really, and in fact, that, that that's one of the dangers that we have. We, you know, we, I mean, one of the things that we have to look at: you 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 need to nurture a democratic culture, and that democratic culture should not just be confined to one sector of the society but should encompass m most of the critical sectors of that society, whether it has to do with the economic system, the political system, or the ci or civil society. And, and so you need to encourage that kind of activity. Sure, and media now, is no critical. Question. But it gone to the yeah, point where Putin can decide as a dictator what is going to happen. And, 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 and this man now, you know, different, and, maybe and, not military, but a high point of development. And Trump, a high and Trump point can of declare life. what is and truth then Trump and, and what is not and truth, what is fact and of not fact. Can come on board. But if you think, if America thinks, Professor Wilson, as we close, that Elon Trump, Elon Musk rather, is, <laughs> is investing, <laughs> Freudian slip, <laughs> is investing $44 billion um, to enhance democracy and for charity, uh, for charitable purposes, I, I think that is the height of naivety, don't you think? No, but um, Musk is a very complex fellow. I mean, you know, he he reads a lot. He's interested in history. He talks in terms of, you know, what can be done in terms of the further evolution of humanity. Uh -huh. He's interested in space. He, he's not just a one-dimensional person. Okay. And, you know, uh, I mean, if, if you listen to the interviews that he has given and the way he, he uh, expresses himself, you know, he's not narcissistic. And he, he, I, I wouldn't say he's he, with power as such. But I think he's naive when it comes to running something like Twitter and talking about um, ab the absolutist um, free, um, free press. 
Mm. I think it's just a far more complex. And it's really interesting to see who he appoints as a CEO yeah. and how the governing of Twitter is going to manifest itself because he can't do that that's, single-handedly. That's where but I think it, the thing is. His values will be influential. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that I, I suspect about him is that he's very critical of government and he's very critical of, of regulation. And, you know, we're not in a lazy fear kind of era. We are in an era of globalization, an era in which there is increasing concentration of production and ownership. And we have to find ways to make certain that that, that does not lead to something like what exists in Russia, but something in what Peter Abrams brought about in terms of RGR. Yeah. That is what, that's the kind of model that we need to be pushing and to, and to really re recognize that uh, that is the wise, model. That's wise the words. Professor, before you go, yeah. where do you think the majority of us fall? And we said? I think, uh, I think the majority of us fall in, in, in trying to expand democratic culture. Yes, yes. And, 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 and th that is so important. And that is completely contrary to any tendencies of autocracy, of tribalism, or of, of, of concentration of power. Eh? Because all the other isms you are going to have. And they are our own. Yeah. But they want the yeah. dominant one. I mean, yeah. look, at, look at the disaster in Russia. Look at the disaster in yeah. Iran. Yes. When you have sort of top down um, concentration of where one, one person can just make all the decisions. There's nothing more dangerous to humans, to humankind, than that kind of undemocratic um, fantasizing. I love that. And don't, uh, don't make your mind feel that it is all them. They also have their groups. Well, that they influence do, they, they, they do. speak all, for. All, all the more sensitive okay, the struggle. Yeah. Professor Basil Wilson, always a great pleasure and honor to have you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All the best. Sir Basil, Good. do well in New York. I'm going to come up there to see you one day. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and for real, we, what we have in common, we, we have a, the, um, the commonness of the City University. To, you went to City University, too? Yeah, I he, he did. went to... So, went, went to City College, and I'm a product of the City University. Yeah, which of them? The one in, 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 in Manhattan? No, I went to Queens College. and oh, I you went my, to Queens. It's Queens, Queens, Brooklyn, and... and, and, and Stop your boss in this now, the two of you. No, no. Professor Basil Wilson. <laughs> we, wear the same, we wear the same tie and the same ring. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, good there. This is the public eye on the Bridge 99, leaking with Ira Jam. Now, we soon come back. Thanks very much for being with us on The Bridge 99 FM. This is The Public Eye, linking with Ira Jam and Beauregard in, in, in New York. Um, the, 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 the issue of the, the Jamaican and Caribbean athletes, I wanted to return to that in the few yes, minutes that yes, we have. Yes. Um, Beauregard, the, 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 the presence of the Jamaican athletes, um, first of all, Jamaica is likely to dominate the pen relays again. We do it all the time, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. So, it but it is a big advantage for a Jamaican school person, boy or girl, to be able to come and show off themselves because it may well mean that they get a scholarship to, to attract that's scholarships. That's where they get the best opportunity. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes, so, it does mean that. So that 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 is that is an inestimable opportunity. Yes. Yes. And that's something very, we don't want to we don't want to get rid of. No. But we would like to share it. Okay, sharing it. <laughs> how, how do we do that? Because, <laughs> frankly, the opportunities for professional athletics in, in Jamaica is very limited. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, for professional sports, generally, it's very limited. Now, if a person gets a chance to, to whether it's football or, or tennis or uh, reggae girls. Athletics. Uh, right. Athletics, yes. Um, the, the, almost inevitably, they're going to have to go abroad. Yes, mm -hmm. and yes. we cannot object to that. And it is, no. it is not only the person who gets a chance to go. As I told you, there are several people sitting out there, they're, they're marking, marking names and, yeah. and, and when yeah. they finish. Yeah. But, 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 but it is happening right in Jamaica. Right. Did you know that some of these schools are going to the country? Yeah, and I to, don't agree with to that. To bring them in? Yes, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I, I, well, why I you don't agree with that? No, I mean, I my, school, my school has space. And we want a good runner. We no, find one out no, no, in the hills where Charles used no, to live. And what it means is that you in, in you in your school 
who who don't who, who don't run quite as fast, but would would benefit from the exposure of going to champs or something. You go sit down while that import come in. No, I don't agree with that. I yeah. I think you need to reconsider that uh -huh. because I you're mean, taking away an opportunity. Yeah. From somebody who would and never would have and it, and you're taking away another opportunity from somebody else who would get it. So it's 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 balanced out in, in the wrong direction. What do you think? What do you think? Win, you York. I, I think I think that if the opportunity presents itself for students to come here and you know represent yes. some other schools yeah, and and colleges, well, that, they, that, that they different. should take those not those only children, the they whole family. But yes, on the international benefit. stage, you know, those yes. same students, you know, if they are star and superstar athletes, they should mm -hmm. represent Jamaica but, but, but on like, those Ronnie, international let me, stages. Let me, let me tease you with one. Yeah. Isn't that the same thing you're saying mm -hmm. when you say we should train more teachers, mm -hmm. train more nurses, mm -hmm. train more doctors, and they will go abroad in the diaspora and help us? Isn't that the same thing you're saying? Yes, and I agree, but I think it is site-specific. It may not be the same for... Um, the, in, in the case of the the, doc, the nurses and the teachers, it, they're not they're not pushing out anybody by being trained to do that. Yeah. Whereas when you import children from one high school to the next in Jamaica on the basis of sport, you are in fact doing that. Yeah, you're but the mother in the in country says so she, she would not have a chance. No, well, for her no. pitney to go a well, case. I, I want I want her her pitney to, to to be able to thrive and 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 be prosperous right there where she is. Yes, or come for, for different different reasons. No, no, seriously. I laugh enough to you because well, I, I, I don't think you want me to take off my shoes and show you my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Beauregard, you hear this man? <laughs> <laughs> because they all buck out my nose. No paved roads. Yeah, and no, 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 no track, no, no coach, track. no, no Not anything track. else. But it's, it's very rocks Tony have run on. Yes, it's very important that we should we sh we should understand carefully the advantages of our and also that we do not compromise our economic standards. Or I'm sorry, our academic standards. Yes. In order to mm -hmm. say you, we're going to push you in and and give you a pass mark because you can run fast yeah, or you can yeah, kick, yeah, you yeah. can you can kick ball. You yeah. know, Ronnie, I'm not I'm not trying to say that what you are saying is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a middle way, mm -hmm. and they, that is why we have leaders. Yes. In crisis, yes. you have to take decisions. Yes. So we know who to come, who to stay, and who to work with, so that we can have a balanced society. Well, that is, but, and, uh, but it, it, the, the standards of the balance have to be always under review. Yes. And, and, that, that is the, and they always have to be, not for the benefit of school spirit here or, or absent there, but rather for the benefit of the individuals, yes, taken as a whole. This is why the, the concept, the philosophical, practical concept of the common good is so important to have. It applies to every aspect of life, eh? You would not be mm -hmm. objecting if I do an advertisement. Do, no, not at all. That somebody heard of Pernell Charles and, what, and I've been invited uh -huh. to come and speak next Wednesday yeah. at a school. They have a school somewhere in Barbara, uh, up in Papina for college train leaders. Uh -huh. You hear about the high school, three to s from three year old to six. Really? And, and, I have and to you're going to speak to them. But I'm going to get some, some information <laughs> from you. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because you'll be doing very well to be able to, to, to be able to say to, to speak to that age group right. in, involves great talent. Right? Yes. 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 And, and I need some <laughs> religious religious you. guidance too. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, Beauregard, what a thing, eh? Time now yes, um, unfortunately for us to, to, to begin to take leave. Oh, we have a little bit more time. So Beauregard, this the the spring now. Uh, is upon yes. upon you people. Um, I'm I'm very concerned about the tilt of American politics. It sounds uh, uh, that there's going to be some kind of of of, of changing of the guard of, in the control of the Senate and the House. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> Professor Wilson was talking about time when Mr. Biden was on to the Build Back America bill of uh, legislation that looked mm -hmm. like it did. No, the big so send. I haven't, the haven't big heard send. anything about it in a, no. in a while. The big send from Mr. Trump yeah. is. S the new slogan is yeah. Save America. Save America. Now, we have a problem running. Yeah. And it's a, to me, it's a big problem. Uh -huh. I think the worst is still to come in this war between yeah. Russia and S so and so. In terms of terms and conditions of how you support goods, yeah. they have now cut off things from Poland. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. And they're going to cut to war against each other. Sure. Uh, 
I think that they knew, I don't understand the Americans sending two of their top persons, yes. Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense. Yes. What is the reason? Where are we going? Because this is not going to stop now. Well, but they have to send them there because if they don't send them there, then the, the, the Russians, the Ukra Ukrainians will be absent their best friends. And you can't make it happen. It will, what the, 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 the Cold War will resume. The Russian Empire would stretch more, isn't that? Yeah, the, I mean the Cold War will get warmer. Warmer. It has never. <laughs> well, <laughs> never more regard, this, 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 this thing is very complex, you know. Yes, it is. <coughs> and, and um, you know, just looking at it, um, I'm really concerned because we hear them talking about Russia being able to, you know, um, do a cyber attack. Uh, yes. on, on a lot of banks and things. So this eventually, and, and hopefully not, yes. this might come down to something financial, you know, where a lot of people suffer financially. Well, this is it. If an attack should take place. Anyway, this. sir, let me just tell you, Bakramasa, that it is good to be part of a nation where for all of our faults and deficiencies, we're not into that. We're suffering from it because the food price gone up like anything and the gas price will go up. Yes. Yes. For the, fir for the first time, is not the, the president Jamaican government causing it? No, the Jamaican government could do more, but I'm not <laughs> blaming them. I'm 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 facing you with with the, with the reality. Look at the gleaner today. Food crisis grips Jamaican homes. What bothers me, running, and it bothers me deep down. Yeah. I support you. All the foods were not bought last week. No. And the All price. that is, and everything is About the 20 and 30 percent increase. increase. Somebody need to be able to look at it and say, no, come on, gentlemen. But, but then your government doesn't believe in price, prices commission. No, 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 hold on. They believe our in government. free market. Our government. Our government. Yes. So we know so on the bridge, we'll have to We have decide. to call them and say, no, it can't, it can't Ke go that Ke way. Uh, the people taking advantage and, of people. And we have, we have New York supporting us. He's backing we up. Have, have <laughs> <laughs> Beauregard, you hear the argument? But it's very important that people be yes. be clear on on on, on that when advantage is being taken, and that's not an argument against competition. In fact, this is f uh, in favor of that. And it's like for it to survive, Rennie, for it to survive, we can't do the mass of people. No, and you cannot impose these mm -hmm. things on the mass of people. And they you manage. have storerooms for chapter, years. Matthew chapter eighteen, verse twenty-three: the scribes and Pharisees put burdens on on the, on the backs of people, which they themselves did nothing to relieve. And uh, oh God, all I have to say about that, <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Harry Jam, amen. thanks for your company. Boragard, till next Thank week. You. Take care of yourself. All right, you too. The public Take eye. Care, we thank Bernard That Charles was the public Senior. eye open mind. The connection thank all to of the those who made it possible FM with the for us Ronnie to be here so Colonel Charles, uh, on the public eye today. And we give way to Nikki Z on the bridge 99 FM. See you next week.